Hi, it's B, and welcome back to my channel. I'm outside protecting my peas, trying to get some sun. Trying to be careful in this grass where I'm sitting. You know, creepy crawlers. They're everywhere. What are you going to do, right? <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to read a little bit again from this book. You probably can't see it. The sun is like definitely blaring. I love it. Go out, get in some nature, get some vitamin D from the sun. The best vitamin D you can get. You can buy vitamins from the store, but the most important vitamin D comes from the sun. Be careful, you know, you don't want to be out in the sun too, too long. My hair is still drying. All right, anyway, so this is the Overcoming Tough Times, God's Answers to Every Situation. I think in my last video I was reading it too, but I just wanted to read a little bit. Just a little bit. Let's see, where was I? Where was I? All right, hopefully this, these aren't the ones that I read <laughs> in the last video. They might be. I don't know. My lips are dry. I walked here. Um, what do I want to read? All right, dear Heavenly Father, let today and every day be a time of worship. Let me worship you, not only with words and deeds, but also with my heart. And in the quiet moments of the day, let me praise you and thank you for creating me, loving me, guiding me, and sharing with me. Amen. For nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing will be impossible with God. Luke 1, 3, 7. I'm just going to read random things that I like that I underlined. The knowledge that the creator of the universe can do miraculous things in your own life and in the lives of your loved ones. Your challenges as a believer is to take God at his word and to expect the miracles. That's right. Let us not lose heart in doing good for in due time we'll, we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people and especially to those who are in the household of faith. And that's from Galatians 6, 9. I always say that wrong. I don't think I'm saying that right. I apologize. Dear brothers and sisters, whenever trouble comes your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. That's James 1, 2-4. I love that. Um, so this page says, as you look at the landscape of your life, do you see opportunities possibilities and blessings or do you focus instead upon the more negative scenery do you spend more time counting your blessings or your misfortunes if you acquire the unfortunate habit of focusing too intently upon the negative aspects of life then your spiritual vision is in need of correction whether you realize it or not opportunities are whirling around you like the stars crossing the night sky beautiful to observe but too numerous to count yet you may be too concerned with the challenges of everyday living to notice those opportunities that's why you should slow down occasionally watch your, catch your breath <laughs> and focus your thoughts on two things the talent god has given you and the opportunity that he has placed before you god is leading you in the direction of those opportunities your task is to watch carefully, to pray ver verbally, I'm saying that wrong, and to act accordingly. I love this book. I need to hear this. Like, I've read this, like I've said before, so many times, and I will continue to read it, like, over and over and over. Often God shuts a door in our face so that he can open the door through which he wants us to go. Sometimes, like, I get upset you know, and this is why it's so important that I read this over and over. Because I'm like, why did God do that? You know, if I was supposed to do this, and why am I being blocked? Why are all these doors closing for me? You know, because sometimes, I've said this before, you know, it's for the greater good. You know, it's blessings in disguise. Like detours sometimes that in the moment seem frustrating or don't seem to be helping us. You know, I've later, later realized that it was a help. It was help. You know, it was... Because that's not what God's plan was for me. You know, like, that's not where I was supposed to go. That's not who I was supposed to be around. That wasn't the person that God told me, you know, was my husband or, you know, whatever. So that's what that reminded me of. When God closes the door in our face, 
you know, so he can open the door through which he wants us to go. You know, blessings in disguise is what they usually turn out to be. So in the moment, I might be upset and it might not make sense, but then eventually it does. You know, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it now, you know. God specializes in taking tragedy and turning it into triumph. The greater the tragedy, the greater the potential for triumph. Wow. <laughs> when God is involved, anything can happen. Be open and stay that way. God has a beautiful way of bringing good vibrations out of broken chores. That is amazing. So focus on possibilities, not roadblocks. The road of life contains a number of potholes and stumbling blocks. Of course you would encounter them from time to time and so will your family members, but don't invest large quantity of your life focusing on past misfortunes. On the road of life, regret is a dead end. Amazing, like I don't even have to say anything after this. I mean, the book literally speaks for itself. I mean, you know, enough said right there. Questions to consider. Do I place my hope in God? Yes. Do I prayerfully seek to understand God's plans for my life? Yes. Do I place limitations on myself? And do I place limitations on God's power to use me for his purpose? Sometimes. I have to trust the process. Dear Lord, give me the courage to dream and the faithfulness to trust in your perfect plan for my life. When I'm worried, give me strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Today, Father, I will trust you and honor you with my thoughts, with my prayers, with my actions, and with my dreams. That's good. Doing the work now. If you wait for perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. And that's from, I always say this wrong. I don't even want to try to say it. E-C-C-L-E-S-I-A-T-E-S. -E -E it's in the Bible, 11-4. I'm sorry, but I'm not. Like, I know I can't pronounce it. I, I can't. When tough times arise, it's easy and tempting to avoid those hard-to-do tasks that you would prefer to avoid altogether. But the habit of procrastination takes a double toll. First, important work goes unfinished. And second, valuable energy is wasted in the process of putting off the things that remain undone. God has created a world that punishes procrastinators and rewards men and women who do it now. In other words, life doesn't procrastinate. So if you're putting things off instead of getting things done, there are some things you can do. One, have a clear understanding of your short and long-term goals and set your priorities in accordance with those goals. Two, when faced with distasteful tasks, do them immediately, preferably first thing in the morning even if the unpleasantness is a low priority activity. Go ahead and get it out of the way if it can be completed quickly. Dep dispatching distasteful tasks sooner rather than later will improve the quality of your day and prevent you from wasting untold amounts of energy in the process of fighting against yourself. Three, avoid the trap of per per yeah, per oh. perfectionism, jeez be willing to do your best and be satisfied with the results of course i would stumble on that that's a very good one nothing's perfect just do it to the best of your ability okay and whatever is your best today may not be your best tomorrow just remember that it's okay one day at a time four if you don't already own one purchase a daily or weekly planning system that fits your needs if used properly a planning calendar is worth many times what you pay for it Five, start each workday with a clear written to-do list ranked according to importance at lunchtime. Take a moment to collect your thoughts, re-examine your list, and refocus your efforts on the most important thing you wish to accomplish during the remainder of the day. I should do this. This is another reason why I need to reread it because some of these things I really haven't done in my life or applied it. I mean, I make a mental note, oh, I'm going to do that, you know, but I should. If you, if you do nothing in a difficult time, your strength is limited. Proverbs 24.10 If you are too lazy to plow in the right direction, you will have no food at the harvest. Proverbs 24 When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. 
And that's again E C C L E S I A T E S by four. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for men. Colossians, I feel like I say that wrong too. Colossians, I don't know, 323. I found that the worst thing I can do when it comes to any kind of potential pressure situation is to put off dealing with it. That's John Maxwell. Some of the quotes I didn't say were they're from, I'm sorry. I cannot fix what I will not face. Ooh, Jim Gallery. Do not build up obstacles in your imagination. Difficulties must be studied and dealt with, but they must not be magnified by fear. That's Norman Vincent, P-E-A-L-E. -E. Do the unpleasant work first and enjoy the rest of your day. Marie T. Freeman. Marie, yeah. Not now becomes never. Martin Luther King, of course. Never can... Or maybe it's not. Not now becomes never. Martin Luther. Never confuse activity with productivity. Rick Warren. Do noble things. Do not dream them all day long. Ooh, Charles Kingsley. The habit of procrastination is often rooted in the fear of failure, the fear of discomfort, or the fear of embarrassment. Your challenge is to confront these fears and defeat them and i'll end with this questions to consider when something needs to be done do i see the wisdom in doing it sooner than later sometimes <laughs> yes is the fear of failure holding me back mm, sometimes when faced with an unpleasant job do i act promptly or do i increase my mis misery by procrastinating uh do um Sometimes, sometimes I act promptly and sometimes, yeah, I increase my misery by procrastinating. That's the truth. All right, well, I'm with this. Dear Lord, when I'm confronted with things that need to be done, give me the courage and the wisdom to do them now and not later. Amen. All right, again, overcoming tough times, God's answer to every situation. I, brought, I bought this book at Walmart. You probably cannot see it. It's leather. It has a beautiful tree reminds me of the tree of life on it i know this one's blaring anyway take care of your mind take care of your body take care of your spirit get out in mother nature enjoy the day live in the light stay in the light love yourself love each other love your neighbors love your children you know love your family I say that, you know, as I sit here and feel like, where's the love, you know, but seriously, it's okay, because God loves me, you know, my angels love me, my team, Mother Nature loves me, the sun loves me, <laughs> all the elements love me, remember, only God can judge you, God is your judge, you know, do what makes you happy, as long as it's of love, of light, you know, spread the love, guys, take care of your mind, Think, take care of your body, take care of your spirit, Protect your peace at all costs, no matter what it looks like. Just protect your peace, okay? I love you guys. I send you love and light. Thanks.